Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game. This is a pickup game that I played back in August 2022, and I'm showing it to you now because I wanted to, to do a video because of the World Tournament. The World Tournament is coming up. Uh, if you haven't registered for it and you're watching this channel, go register for it, probably. You're watching like hour-long YouTube videos about War of the Ring. You should go play in the War of the Ring tournament. Uh, it's totally free to enter. Registration closes in three days, probably, if I post this video uh, tomorrow. And um, it's a lot of fun. So I'll include a link to the registration below. And I'm hoping we can break our record. Last year, we had 128 players. The majority of players had never played in the tournament before last year. And so I'm hoping we will continue to get lots of new players. And it should be a fun structure. Okay. Anyway, enough on that. Let me show this game. I have no idea what happened to this game. When I play games, I will make notes to myself. I'll have like a naming system that says, oh, is this an interesting game? to do for a log, to, for a video. And I rated this pretty high as an interest. So hopefully it's an exciting game. It'll be a surprise to me. It can be a surprise to you. Let's see what happens. I'm playing Shadow. My opponent is Price G335. And um, they had never used action tokens before, but they were happy to try them. So we're using action tokens and I get gave them choice of side because I had suggested action tokens. They chose free people. So they're free people, I'm Shadow. I drew Threats and Promises and obviously very happy to see Cruel Weather early. I will look forward to stalling the Fellowship if I can. And they drew Aomer and Axe and Bow. Reasonable starts. Aomer is always nice to be able to defend Rohan. They didn't get any Palantirs, so not super efficient with Gandalf, but still, this is a very reasonable start, I think, for free people and a reasonable start, I would say, good start for Shadow. I don't typically play Threats and Promises. I don't know if I'm going to... Just, I mean, you could just play it right here. They do have, they do have two musters, and so that makes me tempted to play it. I'm thinking maybe I did play it this game. I almost never play it, but I'm, I might play it in this situation. So decide: would you would you play threats and promises with this palantir, or would you draw a strategy card or a character card? I think my plan is to play it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so they start by moving the fellowship. And I think that's fine. I mean, on one hand, yeah, move, see what happens, and then you can hide with Strider. Um, yeah, why not? Okay, so I hit them right off the bat. Obviously, that's lucky. Um, but they get a two. Now, would you lose Gandalf here? I mean, this is actually a situation where it's very likely that um, Shadow is going to get Isengard. I mean, Isengard to war and Saruman turn one. So, and you have a Will of the West showing. So I might be tempted to lose Gandalf here to this Will of the West. And since I have two action tokens, I can just pass, 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 and then delay Saruman by a turn. Okay. Yep. So they lose Gandalf. I think that's pretty straightforward. They, um, okay. So I did not play Threats and Promises. And instead I drew a strategy card and I got Day Without Dawn. Um, kind of fun to see that particularly, I mean, Gandalf's already... Um, out of the fellowship, so I'm not going to be able to stall Gandalf, but okay, not bad to see Day Without Dawn early. If you get it early and I have enough musters that I'll, I'll probably be able to get Southrons and Easterlings to war pretty soon, at some point over the next eight turns, seven, eight turns, Free People is probably going to roll double, double Will of the West. Unlikely, I'd say, to roll triple Will of the West, but they might. Um, and so by getting this early, it increases my chance of being able to snag well with it at some point. Okay. So sure. I muster Isengard. They pass. I muster Sar Sauron to war. They muster elves. I move armies. Where do I move? Uh, okay. I move to near Harad and... Then they move the fellowship here. So I think if you're going to move the fellowship, this does make sense because if you get hit then you can, and get revealed, then you can use Strider's ability to hide with this um, army muster die. So I think that can make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think the other thing to consider is uh, you use this army muster or, or you use an action token. Maybe you draw a card. 
Um, maybe you muster somebody towards war. And then um, Shadow has to go before you and you get the last action of the round. And therefore, Shadow will not be able to bring in um, Saruman. Maybe they just want to save their action tokens. They're happy to move here against only one eye. And then they'll hope to roll a Will the West turn two. Okay, so I missed them. That's that's nice. I got them the first hit, which was unlikely. Um, expectation, um, if you, you know, roll once for a six and once for a five and a six, you know, it's close to half. So, um, okay. So they, I get, I get Saruman. They muster the elves one away from war. I move army some more. Looks like I'm doing some Gondor thing. And um, they don't use their token, which makes sense. I get worn with sorrow and toil. Okay. I wonder if I'm going to play that early. And they get the red arrow. Wow. So they got two, they have two Rohan muster cards already. Uh, that is pretty fun. I allocate one eye, roll two more, and they get this beautiful roll. Okay. So they get Gandalf. This is great. Great for them. Okay. So they're going to start by getting Gandalf. Okay. I don't know that there's a huge rush to do that. Um, I might be tempted to move in case the um, Shadow has Worn of Sorrow and Toil. Uh, I play Worn of Sorrow and Toil. Okay. That makes sense. And um, they play Axe and Bow. So that's interesting. You can use Worn of Sorrow and Toil to get rid of Axe and Bow. Um, but... Um, I think that's a totally valid play. Yeah, I mean, how's corruption going? All right, you can always play it. I wonder, Aomer or Red Arrow, just to start to get um, Rohan prepared. Um, particularly if you play. Oh, right, you can't play Red Arrow because Gondor isn't at war, isn't active yet. Okay, so maybe you just maybe just wait. All right, and it's nice to have scouts. All right, so I get um, I get ready for Corsairs in Umbar. Maybe I haven't drawn it yet, have I? No, I haven't drawn it, but maybe I'll draw it eventually. And um, I guess I'm avoiding Faramir's Rangers temporarily by not moving this army uh, from Minas Morgul into South Athelion. Maybe it would have been more efficient to do that. I guess we'll see. Um, I play Threats and Promises here. So that's cool. So I waited until this moment where they have this muster that is pretty useless to them other than putting um, elves to war, in which case I can get the Witch King. So that's nice. Little do I know that they have um, cards to play, but okay. And we confirm that the um, that the action tokens do not allow you to bypass threats and promises. So action tokens are worse than dice. You can't use, um, you, you couldn't use this action token to bypass threats and promises. Okay, so... Um, Let's see. They move the fellowship once. I think it makes sense to always move at least once. And I miss. That's nice for for Shadow. I mean, for free people. I get my armies going towards Gondor. They use a ring. Whoa. Did not expect this to move again. So I'm a little surprised by this. I mean, yes, it is nice to keep the fellowship moving two times per turn. But you just gave Shadow a ring and um, you're moving through Moria on a five or a six. I guess you might not get revealed. You might not get hit. Um, I would have. I think I probably. I, I I probably would have played Aomer. Um, I understand not putting the elves to war, and threats and promises does um, stop that. So so this is cool. I mean, I I think this is a cool result of threats and promises. Rarely played for me, at least, but. Um, definitely we're seeing it's we're seeing its benefit here uh, because I certainly would have considered at least as as a shadow or I mean as free people had I seen this Gondor attack coming I would be likely to muster Gondor once with this with this die okay um, in any case I hit them zero reveal so they're going to go through Moria and then a zero reveal okay so um, you know I think that demonstrates the value of um, continuing to move i mean yeah you take some corruption but it's okay you have axe and bow haven't been hit that much so that's that's pretty could have could have been worse certainly could have been worse um okay 
So that's that. And then I muster South Run and Easterlings towards war, right? Because I want to be prepared to play Day Without Dawn. Um, it's possible that Strider might be separated to Minas Tirith at some point and get crowned. I certainly don't feel like my military is going super fast. But um, okay, so they don't use any tokens. I get Ulug High, which is always nice to see reinforcements. And um, Flocks of Corbain, I don't find useful um very much Ooh, they got mithril coat and sting that is it, it's interesting when worn with sorrow and toil is um out i kind of don't want to draw mithril coat and sting too soon um but this axe and bow situation will um be tempting um i think for shadow to get rid of axe and bow as opposed to draw a random card so and also, I wonder if Free People is going to declare into Lorien to get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil, in which case Worn with Sorrow and Toil is like a, another Cruel Weather, because you're just adding an extra distance to their path. I mean, they do get to heal, but... Um, and I guess in that way, it was a little unlucky that for, for Free People that they didn't even take one Corruption going through Moria, because if they're planning on declaring in Lorien anyway to get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil... Um, they actually would have preferred to get the corruption out of the pool. Okay, interesting situation. So um, I allocate one, I roll zero more, and they get two movement. Okay, so this is pleasant. So I think they can decide, are they going to are they gonna go for, um, to get rid of uh, Warren Osar and Toil? Or do they just press on? I mean, it's going pretty well. It's not nice to lose Mithril Coat and Sting, but maybe you won't lose it. Um, okay, so they hide with the Palantir. I think that makes total sense. I move armies. Okay, fair enough. I guess I'm just taking my sweet time taking care of Gondor because they're not active and I have threats and promises in play. I, I obviously like getting the Witch King, but um, I don't have any, I don't have very many attacks. So what am I thinking here as free people? I, I mean, a shadow, I'm assuming I'm going to draw a card with one of these Palantirs. And then hopefully play one. I mean, maybe I'll play Ulug High, but um, it would be nicer if I got to play something more effective. I'm assuming I'm going to draw a strategy card because I have all these musters. And then maybe I just power up, power up Rohan because at least so far as Shadow, I haven't seen any Rohan uh, mustering cards. Uh, I think Free People is doing great passing. Um, and I draw Pits of Mordor. Okay, so it was a little ill-timed that I moved these units out of Dimmerald Dale, but I think I wanted to um, put a little pressure on the Fellowship. I mean, certainly, I, I feel like I'm going slowly. Um, I muster the South Rounds and Easterlings toward war. That makes sense. Now Day Without Dawn is active. Um, they move once, miss, and miss. And I think, by the way... You know, the, the additional value of that orc on the fellowship is relatively low if they move only once. But because they had two character dice, I felt like there was a chance they would move uh, twice. And so the value accrues for that extra reroll the more uh, times in the round that the fellowship moves. So um, I think if they had only one character, I probably wouldn't have rushed as much. Um Okay, so I muster, uh, I muster up Isengar, uh, Orthanc a little bit using the voice. They play Aomer, beautiful counter, um, and interestingly, they play it in Edoras. Seems fine. I guess they're going to use this army muster to move um, to Westamnet, and the threats and promises and the delay of the Witch King is actually messing with the Red Arrow. Um, so that's kind of cool. All right. They, um, right, and, oh, right, and they did not want to put the elves to war with that muster either, because then I get the Witch King. Um, so they did start to have a more limited use of what to do with that, um, with those muster rolls. And um, we're seeing the benefits of, of threats and promises here. And that's also why I'm saving my um, muster. So maybe maybe I haven't valued Threats and Promises well enough because it's certainly playing a role in this game. Um, and we're seeing the, the ring usage last turn because if they had if they played Aomer last time, then they wouldn't have Aomer to play now and they have, you know, I don't know what they would do. Um, I guess maybe they would use the ring now. 
but they would not have been past Moria yet. So yeah, I don't know. Um, and if you get revealed going past, then you can't declare into Lorien. So, okay. Anyway, um, I play Pits of Mordor here. I think that makes total sense. I refill, I refill um, Moria. I think that's fine. And then I play up in Mount Gundabad. So I don't know, maybe I'm going north towards woodland realm what are i mean what are my plans for victory points here I, i'm not sure i mean definitely seems like i want to take out gondor so that's five maybe i take rohan i don't like seeing this in edoras um maybe i go up north to woodland realm i haven't seen any woodland realm reinforcements yet so maybe my victory points are five in five in gondor hopefully i draw corsairs to make it efficient but still probably five in gondor two more in woodland realm that's only seven i don't know where my other ones come from it's just not clear yet all right so they draw a card here i am a little surprised to see that and they drew a character card so maybe their plan is to just have more character cards in their hand to defend against um like the loss from Morn with Sorrow and Toil. And uh, Reprove the Swifter is good because separating companions out is an effective way of also mitigating Morn with Sorrow and Toil. Um, okay, I, I do have Day Without Dawn ready, so we'll see. All right, so I decide to go for Lorien. Okay, I guess my thinking is maybe they are going to go move the Fellowship into Lorien. I should be prepared to go take it. Okay. And I guess I'll um I guess my plan for victory points is Gondor, Lorien, Rohan. Um maybe I have some leftovers from Lorien to come help out in Rohan if needed. Maybe I have maybe I have some leftovers from Gondor to help out. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, they get the elves to war here. And I guess I understand that because they want to be able to muster up the elves. And now this is going to be like potentially seriously mustered before I arrive. It does give me the Witch King, but it also gives them efficient use of this muster. All right. So, um, oh, right. Against the rules, can't actually use two tokens in the same round because they're like elven rings. Um and it probably would have been good for me because I could have gotten the Witch King. I mean, I guess in some ways that's good for them because then um, Threats and Promises becomes ineffective. So maybe, yeah, I, I wonder how... Maybe it's not so bad to get the Elves to war because if I get the Witch King, then they can start mustering up Gondor and my armies are not in position yet. So... Okay, I, I said it was fine if we break the rules because they didn't know the rules their first time using it, but they said, no, we'll, we'll just do it. I, I don't know. I think at the moment I was thinking it'd probably be better for me because I'd be happy to get the Witch King on turn three. Um, okay, they decide to move instead. They're not getting rid of Warn of Sorrow and Toil. I roll a five and get one point of damage and they get rid of Axe and Bow. So there we go. Um, nice use of Axe and Bow. They're doing well. Uh, I... What am I doing? I'm using... This muster and a ring as an army movement. Okay, I don't like giving up army movements. Um, I don't like giving up rings too easily, but I need to get my armies in position. And um, that muster is not exactly what I want to be doing. So I'm just getting armies in position. There we go. And I need to make sure, I guess, that I can take out Lorien before it... Um, before it musters. So I'm guessing they're going to muster elves once. Yeah. Okay. So elves are at war. And um, oh my gosh, they just top decked up power too great. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, oh, and I drew, wow. I drew Palantir of Orthanc and New Powers Rising. So obviously that's good. Oh, wow. And they got Vile Galadriel. All right. So those were two great draws for them. Um, and the blue tiles are really great when um, when you have Warner with Sorrow and Toil in play because you can get them out of your hand and their future um, corruption benefit, future healing instead of present healing when you don't really need it. So um, 
that's just that's a great draw. Those were two two really good draws. All right, I get rid of Flocks of Corbane. They get rid of Kindred of Glorfindel. Totally makes sense. This is a I see why this is a good game. I, I feel like Shadow is behind, so maybe I'm maybe I'm losing this game. <laughs> I, I don't know what's gonna happen. All right, three eyes rolled. Not really what I want to see. Oh my god, and no muster. I didn't roll any muster, and this is the round that the Witch King could come into play. So, wow. Wow, that's exciting. Okay, and it looks like they didn't declare the fellowship. Was that intentional? I I don't know. So, what's going on? They didn't declare the fellowship. That feels that feels like a mistake. Um, no reason to sit there. I think. I mean, maybe they're doing something. Maybe they didn't. They were going to use we prove the swifter to do something we don't know um i think that's probably just just a mistake so okay um probably is not going to make a difference with four eyes i don't know maybe it will okay they are using another ring their second ring to play power to ring yeah I, this is tricky i mean I'm definitely paying attention to having um, army cards. Uh, that is a thing I've been thinking about. Um, and I mean, maybe I don't have any, but yeah, giving me another ring right here. It's a little sad. Okay. I don't have, yeah. What, what do you do here? I mean, I think I, I think I want to get rid of it right away. Because if I don't get rid of it right now, then um, both of these musters can be played on Lorien. And I think I, having brought this army to Lorien, I think I want to attack Lorien. So, um, okay, Price notes that um, they should have declared the army, but it's a little too late now. Okay, so, all right. Um, I said exactly what I said. <laughs> That's funny. My past self said, maybe they're doing some separation things. And maybe with four eyes, it won't matter. Oh, okay. People are consistent. Um, that's funny. Okay, so I'm getting rid of... Um, I got rid of Palantir of or of um, Orthanc. That's interesting. I had two Palantirs showing. I guess I really wanted to get rid of it. And I'm obviously not losing cruel weather. So that's just how it goes. Um, and then I get rid of Ulog High. Yeah, why am I saving Day Without Dawn? I guess I'm worried about Aragorn getting crowned. I want to slow down the Fellowship, and maybe they're going to roll double Wills of the West at some point. Um, I am often tempted to discard Day Without Dawn um, just because it remains a threat. And Ulog High is good. That was tough. I mean, Return to Valinor is also interesting, but I guess I want it for the combat effect because it's such a good combat effect. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you would have discarded there. Um, okay, so um, Power Too Great goes away. We talk about like whether or not it's visible, um, but whatever. Uh, obviously, that was an army card. Um Okay, and you share passwords at the end, so he uh, price could verify it as well. Price could verify it as well. Okay, um, what's going on? We have undid a bunch of things, and then okay, and now they muster into Lorien, and uh, now I um, attack into Lorien. I leave one Nazgul and one regular on the Fellowship because I want to maximize my chances of hitting them at this point. And it's not really costing me that much because I know that I'm going to have to move Nazgul anyway before attacking into Lorien, and I don't think that one regular is going to make that big of a difference. I'm probably going to have to reinforce Lorien anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to draw a Balrog and it'll be okay. Okay, so... um I, interesting. I just leave the one regular because I want the Nazgul there in case what? In case I just roll a bunch of character dice next turn? I don't know. That doesn't really make sense to me. I feel like 
Yeah, I don't understand that. Okay. Uh, probably won't matter either way. All right, now they move, and I get a hit anyway, so they don't need to feel bad about having not declared, and I get a one reveal. All right, so random card, and now let's see what we get rid of. They have file. We prove the Swifter, Mithril Coat, and Sting, and Eagles are coming. So I might have been tempted to try and play file first. All right, and I might have been tempted to just take one damage there. Uh, all right, Warn of Sauron Toil. Let's see what happens. Um, and good. Okay. So I don't even remember what that... Oh, um, Eagles are coming. So that was probably... I mean, either that or we proved the Swifter would have been okay to get rid of. Um, so... One, two, three. Nice. And um, that's that. That could have that could have gone certainly worse for the fellowship there. Um, I play New Powers Rising. That makes a lot of sense, and um, because these armies are still in Edoras, I think I may be able to get into Helm's Deep. I'm a little worried about Ents. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, hide. I think that makes total sense, and then. I'm using a ring. What? I'm using a ring on an army die. Oh, right. I'm getting the Witch King. <laughs> yeah. So, right. I Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. Okay, so I think that is yet another reason to not play the... Um, the power too great with a ring because it gives me the witch king this round um i waited until the end so that the threats and promises wouldn't matter too much um okay so i get the witch king i think that makes sense ah all right i put them in lorian thinking maybe i can take out lorian okay i guess we'll see so now everybody's active and um they move, I hit them, one reveal again, they just take one this time. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. So they're um, two away from Mordor, pretty fine on corruption, I think, and um, have managed to hold on to Mithril Coat and Sting and Vile Gladriel. Still have Strider as guide. This is looking pretty good for Shadow. Oh, Drew Athalos. Wow, that's great. So that's a fun draw. Book of Mizarble, not so useful. Would have been fun to see um, Celeborn's Galadrium. Could have been nice. Okay, I get Ringwraiths are Abroad. Very happy to see that card. Most Ring Long Plan War, perfectly fine um, for the combat effect. So this is okay for me. And I like Ringwraiths are Abroad just for the flexibility of it and getting to turn a Palantir into an attack. Um, oh my gosh, look at this crazy roll. Four musters, only a single attack. Wow. Okay, and they look like they could get into Mordor this round. Um, so that's scary. I mean, it would have been fun if I could have tried to get into Helm's Deep. There are a lot of things. Okay, so they hide with the muster. Okay, that makes total sense because they can use this Palantir to um, play one of their good character cards. Um, so I got a bunch of musters. What do you do? Um, what do you do with these musters? My force pool is I have a single elite here. I could get some elites up in North Rune maybe and go attack... Uh, yeah, maybe maybe what I do is put a bunch of elites. I mean, that's a giant army to get sitting in East Rune. Yeah, I wonder if I do that. I could also I mean I could also try and take Rivendell. This is a this is a complicated situation. Look, I got all these armies ready in North Athelian and South Athelian to take Gondor, and I'm just sitting outside there. I just have not rolled that many attacks. I wonder what my statistics are on attacks right now. 
Um, yeah. Whoa, I'm minus seven on attacks right now. Uh, let me show you. I am minus seven. All right, this is uh, H are army musters, A are armies, and C are characters. So minus seven on attacks. Whew. High on musters. You know, it's good to get musters early in the game. So this this will be interesting to see how it goes. I'm, I I see why I picked this game. Um, what do you do? Where do you attack? Or what do you muster? What does my current self think? I think in the game I mustered over in North Dunland. All right, let's see what happens. Um, okay, I move an army. What? Did not expect that. Using an army movement of my precious, precious army movement uh, to western, to eastern Emin Wheel to mess with the fellowship so that maybe they're going to get revealed. I have cruel weather in my hand. Why do I really want to reveal them so badly? Oh, wow. I'm just, I don't know, some crazy bluff? All right. I get some units gathered in North Dunland. They get army armies into Westamnet and into Helm's Deep. So they're really doing a great job defending Helm's Deep. I muster more in Orthanc because I guess why not attack anyway? Okay. Um, they move. I miss. Oh, and my reroll hits them. Okay. So I wanted to hit them on the reroll. I did. I guess that's something. Um, <laughs> I say nice job, Orc. Good, but they don't get revealed. Okay, and now do I really want to be sitting on them? Like, what is the the hunt pool is? All right, so I have very good chances of hitting them, but maybe they will not get revealed, and then I get to play Cruel Weather, or do I play Cruel Weather right now? Okay, right. This was so interesting. So do and they just took the corruption, which makes total sense because they have Athalos. So that's beautiful. Um, do I play Cruel Weather right now, meaning they will have to use a um, a character die and then not get revealed? Basically, do I want to gamble on them getting revealed or not getting revealed? Obviously, slightly greater chance that they will get revealed. But all right, let's see what happens. Um, okay, so I'm just waiting. And maybe I'm hoping they're going to use their character die or maybe what i'm doing is i'm i'm baiting out the um the token so i, I i'm thinking well if they are gonna do it they'll probably use the token so i'm waiting for that okay mustering into moria okay Athalos here okay they heal too which is good but now i can play cruel weather and and stall them so not the end of the world, but obviously you don't want to get stalled. Um, relatively unlikely that I have it. So it's I, I think it's actually a pretty reasonable play for, for free people. Um, and now at this point, do you move again or do you play, maybe you play Vile with this, char with this character? I don't know. Um, all right. So they pass. I get another elite in Moria. I wonder what my force pool is like. Okay, so I have one regular or two elites left. Um, they they do play vile. Okay, I think that makes sense. You're probably going to roll two character dice next turn. You still have Strider. You don't want to lose that to Warm with Sorrow and Toil. All that makes sense. Okay, I get another elite in Moria. What am I doing? So I think... I guess I'm being prepared to um, reinforce Lorien, and I am, I mean, the other thing is if this army is going to march up to, to Rivendell, like, they can just muster in Rivendell. Why did I not muster in North Rune? I could have put three elites in North Rune. And had this army merged here and then take out Erebor, take out Woodland Realm. I mean, they haven't played any mustering cards up here, so 
maybe maybe they have them they're holding them in their hand yeah i think north rune and then merging in east rune and taking out erebor probably was the way to go let's see what happens with this army and moria and north dunlin i guess i saw all these units in north dunlin i was like i should try and do something with them okay oh another healing so they got bilbo's song Celeborn's galadrium oh my gosh they have Celeborn's galadrium what draws okay so, oh, okay. At least I get Corsairs. So this is this is good for me. And I have Black Captain, Black Captain Commands and Ringwraiths are abroad. So a lot of flexibility if I roll Palantirs. One I allocated. They declare this time. I think that makes sense. And uh, I roll two eyes, at least a decent number of attacks. And they get the two movement they need. They start by using the um, Will of the West, which obviously is correct, and I miss. And then um, I play Ring Wraiths are abroad because I want to have... What the? Whoa, did not expect that. I'm giving up on Lorien? I'm switching to Gondor. Oh, right, because I just drew Corsairs. I just, whoa. I guess I was like, well, I want to have five leadership when I attack Lorien, so I'll switch to Gondor now. And then maybe I'll bait these musters into Gondor instead of into Rivendell. And then I'll be able to come and get Rivendell later when it's not mustered up. Okay, I, if I maybe this works. I get a Nazgul on the Fellowship. All right, so I attack into Osgiliath. Um, I don't play any cards. And I manage to get two hits. That's obviously lucky. Not crazy lucky, but good. Um, and now I muster... What did I just do? I just mustered a regular in Orthanc. And a Nazgul in um, Moria. Okay, again, still could have put more in North Rune. All right, they they have Celeborn's Galadrium, so I'm feeling good about getting rid of, giving up on Lorien. Um, and I play Corsairs of Umbar here because I would rather Minas Tirith get the extra unit instead of... Dol Amroth because I have closer reinforcements. Interesting. Don't know. I guess I'm scared of Cairdon's ships. I guess we'll see. Um, okay. I don't bother leaving anybody behind because they don't have easy movement from Pelargir and I'm not really worried about a military victory. I don't know. Maybe should have been. Maybe leave one behind. Okay. They muster into Minas Tirith. What did they do? Oh, they played Celeborn's Galadrim and Lorien with their muster. Yeah, okay. Okay, I attack. What? I'm just attacking all over the place. Right, so I'm attacking Fords of Eisen here because now um, they don't have an easy way to get their units from Westamnet into Helm's Deep without spending their last um, their last uh, ring because they need this character die to move the fellowship. Okay, so um, this is cool. I'm just I'm attacking Gondor. I'm attacking Rohan. I'm attacking elves. This is an exciting game. Okay, so I I take out Fords of Eisen. Why not play the scout? I mean, the thing is, if you play scouts to Gap of Rohan, then I guess I guess uh, Gondor uh, Rohan isn't at war. Okay, um, so they go back to no, I get the hit. Doesn't matter. Okay, um, and now they oh right, I took everyone out of Orthanc because. I guess I'm thinking the amount that I would have to leave behind to defend against Ents would weaken this army sufficiently to be able to take out Helm's Deep that um, 
I just need to bring all these. I'm going to hope there are no Ents. And maybe I discard one with Worn with Sorrow and Toil. I don't know. But if necessary, I can bring Nazgul and retake this. Obviously, I don't want to lose the die. But I've already discarded um, Palantir of Orthanc. And I don't have um, Fighting Orc High in hand, uh, which I wouldn't be able to play if Saruman dies. So it seems worth the risk. Obviously, it is good fortune for me that um, they do not have um, any end cards yet. But I also know it will be hard for them to be able to play it this round and defend Helm's Deep and get the Fellowship into Mordor. So probably I'm not losing or think. I'm not losing Sarm on this round. Um, okay. And I think, yeah, okay, that's that's enough. I do have Black Captain Command. So if if they played the Ent to take out um, Orthanc, thinking that I wouldn't be able to use this character die, I think I was willing to play Black Captain Commands to get um, Helm's Deep under Siege. Okay, I instead attack Minas Tirith, and um, they muster Rohan one towards war. It's a, yeah, I don't know why they're bothering with that. I guess they're just temporizing. Right, because they're about to give me a ring. In this way, I sort of waste the effectiveness of this um, muster. I get more Nazgul because I know I'm moving Nazgul around at some point and I have battles going all over the place in Dol Amroth, Helm's Deep, Lorien, maybe Rivendell, I don't know. Um... Okay, and now they're moving, and I hit them, and I get I reveal them. So obviously that is lucky for me. Uh, they lose a character card. Let's see what it is. They have Bilbo Song. We prove the Swifter and Mithril Coat and Sting. Um. Oh right, they tried to. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure they were able to play, um, play Mary, uh, from the better spot of No Man Land. So um, I just we just undid it to there, um, and Mary goes to Druden Forest, I guess. Okay, Warnosar and Toil. Let's see what they lose. Uh, they lost Mithril Coat and Sting on that one. So yeah, that's that just happens sometimes. I mean, maybe it's worth taking the one corruption. I mean, you might have lost Strider too there. Um, so maybe it's worth taking the corruption. You hold on to Mithril Coat and Sting. Um, you can actually play Mithril Coat and Sting when you get into Mordor. And um, okay, so the extra tile was an eye. Uh, so that is at least a bit of uh, good fortune for uh, for free people. Could have been could have been worse there to get three corruption, but you know obviously not great to be revealed. You still kept Strider, so okay. Um, let's see. They draw Gua here and Fearfire Foes. It might be worth keeping Gua here. It protects Bilbo's song a little bit, and that way we prove the Swifter or Gua here. You can bring Gandalf somewhere. Like Gandalf can come into Minas Tirith. That'd probably be pretty good, especially if we don't have Ents yet. All right, Rage of the Dunlendings could be useful. Lore of the Ring, who knows? They got rid of your fire foes. That makes sense. Okay, allocate one eye, roll one more, and then a whole bunch of movement. So this, I think, is the moment I was hoping for with Rivendell. So good for me. That was my plan. We know that Power Too Great has already been played. Um, maybe they have Kindred of Glorfindel, although we know that it got discarded. Um so Fellowship Hides and Black Captain Commands. Sure, I'm going after um, Ms. Tirith. I wonder, like, maybe it's worth hiding with the Palantir? Because what are you going to play? I guess maybe the Red Arrow. I, yeah, I don't know what card you're going to play that you couldn't just play with a character die. All right, anyway, um, Black Captain Commands, I get... Uh, I undo, undo, undo. Okay. Uh, instead, I attack Dol Amroth. Right, because I guess I'm worried that they have um, Cirdan's ships. 
and they just didn't play it because they really wanted to hide. I mean, probably if you have Cured and Chips, you just play it first thing. But, um, okay. In any case, I play, what am I going to play? I guess I'm going to play Return to Valinor here. Yep, I'd saved that. I saved that very patiently when I could have I could have gotten rid of, um, yeah, instead of Ulog High. So am I happy to have this instead of Ulog High? I think I am. You know, this is a good situation. I don't have leadership here. Uh, so it's good to have a good um, combat roll. This gives me two and a half hits expected. I get I get three. So okay, uh, that's the end of Dol Amroth. A quick a quick death. Um, Fellowship moves. I get an eye. Obviously good. They just take the two here. It's a little weird that you took one before but are taking two here. I guess they realize it's important to be able to hide with Strider. Um, there are no red tiles in the pool. So I think overall, this is a pretty friendly pool. Yeah. I mean, it is a decent amount of corruption, but you can take the corruption. You have companions in there. So I think it makes sense to go up to three and then... All right. I could play Lure of the Ring here. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. I think I'm just going for military and hoping since they don't have any rings left that maybe I can finish the military job on turn eight and they won't get enough movement to be able to destroy the ring. I think that's my hope. Right. So I'm not playing Lord of the Ring. I don't feel like I can corrupt them. I'm just trying to um, win the military victory. All right. So I'm going after Minas Tirith. Uh, I'm assuming I'm playing Mustering of Long Pillin War. Okay, Lord of the Ring. Okay, cycling it. That's fine. Maybe I'll get a red tile. If I get a red tile, I wouldn't mind playing it. Um, one hit. They get two back. I don't press. I get Orc Patrol. I don't know how useful that is. Um, they hide. I muster the Mouth of Sauron. That seems good. And then they move. And they don't get revealed, and they get a three. Okay, so do you, I think you probably lose a random here. You don't really want to lose Bilbo Song, but you're probably okay on corruption. Um, that was not a random. That was a intentional choice. Um, yeah, I guess you don't want to get the Hobbit, and that's a pretty efficient use. There are two other threes, so you know maybe I want to hang on to Strider's guide ability for a little bit longer. Um, all right, let's see what they lose. Okay, they lose. We prove the Swifter. Not that big a deal. They still have Gwa here. Um, Gandalf is not coming into Minas Tirith. These, these wargs are just sitting here outside of Fords of Eisen, not taking, not attacking Helm's Deep. I think I was, I didn't want to put Rohan to war. Um, and so I just want to clean up Gondor. I mean, I have so many things going on. All right. Um, Okay, I move. I guess my plan is to use this Palantir to play Rage of the Dunlandings. But, um, right, but I'm like, I can't move six. So that's actually better to um, bring in a few more. So I end up with two and eight. Yeah, I probably should have brought this elite in also. Um, okay, moving on. I go with my plan to take out Rivendell while I have the chance. And they get revealed again. Gimli goes away. Another one with Sorrow and Toil. And that time it's Bilbo's song. Which honestly, I think you kind of want to save Gwyer to be able to bring Gandalf into Minas Tirith. Um, and I put Rivendell under siege. All right. So at this point, I have Gondor for five, Rivendell for seven, Rohan for nine, and then either Edoras or Dale for 10. Seems like I should have gotten some mustering up here. Like, look at, look at this extra mustering here in Moria. All right. Let's see what happens. Um, Wizard Staff, not useful. Draw. I get Morgul Wound, not useful. Denethor's Folly 
could be played maybe to help out in um Minas Tirith if it turns out I get a bunch of Palantirs. Um Devilry of Orthanc is also a playable combat effect up in Rivendell or in Rohan. All right, so do I have enough attacks? I have what looks to me like five attacks. I don't know that that's going to get the job done. Uh, one in... Oh, and I have a ring. Okay, so six attacks. And I didn't roll any musters, which the mouth could have helped with. So can I do it with six attacks? One in Rivendell. One maybe in Minas Tirith. That seems unlikely. Uh, two in... Two in Helm's Deep. Pilar Gear. Yeah, not happening this round. I don't see how that's happening this round. They got one movement, and I still don't have any red tiles. Okay, so this is a situation where wouldn't it be nice to have Strider? Like, you might not have had him. He might have been lost to a random companion, but okay. Um, especially if you don't have any rings left. All right, so they hide. I I have Orc Patrol. Does Orc Patrol have... It? Yeah, Orc Patrol has no chance of revealing them. Um, okay, I'm attacking into Minas Tirith, trying to cycle into a red tile just to maybe have some hope. Um, right, because I'm getting rid of Orc Patrol, hoping to draw into a red tile. And this is actually a pretty effective combat card. Uh, <clears throat> didn't help this round, but it usually is. All right, got one hit. Um, I don't press, and I draw. Okay, so there's a red tile. Um, and they bring Gandalf in now. No, is he here. I'm safe from this. I never do end. Um, I play the ring as mine. Maybe they'll draw the red tile. That would be huge. Red arrow shows up in Edoras. Um. Now Rohan is at war. I better put... I'm not putting Helm's Deep. Um, Really? You don't want Helm's Deep under siege? You're going to let them just muster up? What? What's going on? Okay, so I guess my plan is... It's not that efficient for them to muster more in Helm's Deep. And I want to maximize my chances of taking out Gandalf. I have Devilry of Orthanc. I mean, I have dreadful spells. I can move armies in, and then if I take out, if I take out, Min if I take out Gandalf, then there's a chance they won't roll enough even to finish next round if they get revealed. This is questionable. Okay, dreadful spells, none, none. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'm attacking into Helm's Deep. Okay. And, uh, wow, this is an exciting game. And then I'm attacking to Minas Tirith, hoping for, what am I doing? I guess I'm Relentless Assault, right? This is, the, this is my only chance to take out Gandalf. I'm doing a Relentless Assault. This has to be, right? Gandalf obviously shines. I play. That's hilarious. So they actually get to play Wizard Staff. That's fun. I play Desperate Battle, thinking that, I don't know what, I guess we'll see. Um, I roll two hits. Okay, not bad. They get three hits. Four hits against me. Holy cow. Okay. And um, I got two against them. All right, so he is down to two units there. They are down to two units. I get to redraw. King is revealed. All right, I do have this whole force on Osgiliath. So they're mustering in Pilar gear and Edoras. I move armies in to reinforce in Minas Tirith. And Lamadon, I come over to take out Pilar gear. And now they move the fellowship. Is it going to be the red eye? I mean, the hunt pool is pretty small. Obviously, one out of eight is not high, but it's also not nothing. That's 12 and a half percent. Regular eye. Okay, so at least they're revealed. That means that they have to... Um, get two movement and they don't have any character cards so that's good at least no effect of warm and toil they have to get at least two uh character um dice next turn 
And if I manage to take out Gandalf, which I'm sure I'm going to try and do right here, um, then they only roll four dice, and there's a chance they'll only roll one. Okay, so I play Black Breath here. I'm a little surprised by that. I guess I'm trying to cycle into more red tiles, and then I'm going to play Relentless Assault as my combat card round two, and then I'm going to save Day Without Dawn to play as a card effect if they roll two Wills of the West. So it actually reduces whatever permutations there are. It slightly reduces their chances. If they roll two Wills of the West, it won't work because I have Day Without Dawn. Okay, so um, they play Book of Mazarble here. Um, Black Breath, I get no hits. Oh my gosh. And they get none against me. I reduce, I'm just hoping to kill Gandalf. And I guess I play, oh, I got Gron. That could be useful. And I get, um, I'm sure I'm playing King is Revealed here. They don't have a card. King is Revealed. Take two hits. Try and roll three. It's like a little, it's close to 50-50. And I don't do it. Oh, no, I do do it. Oh, I got five hits. Okay. So they get three back, but that is not going to be enough. And um, Gandalf is gone okay uh note worn with sorrow and toil did get rid of eagles are coming which is a heroic death obviously that's very effective when you get gandalf into a combat so worn with sorrow and toil did a lot of work this game all right we go on to next round um i am making this closer than i would have expected three eyes but probably enough attacks i do have the mouth and i still have a ring so this is actually six attacks and they only got one. Oh my gosh. So they only got one. And they can't destroy the ring. Because they don't have... Um, yeah. That's just how it goes. Even if they had There's Another Way. I don't think they could do it. Because um, Pippin is still in. So I know that I have to win this round. And they hide. And I attack into Helm's Deep. Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of hit points, 15 hit points against seven. I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to bring in more reinforcements, but I think I just have to hope that it works. All right. Um, Devilry of Orthanc and Daylight. Nice play of Daylight there. And I do get two hits, though. They get only one back, and now that's probably not enough because I just have so many elites there. Um, I'm playing another strategy card here. That's interesting. I wonder, is it Onslaught or Relentless Assault? I'm guessing it's... I actually don't know what it is. Maybe it's Relentless Assault. If I, if I was going to play Onslaught, I would be tempted to just wait to play Onslaught. So I'm guessing this is Relentless Assault. Okay, they get a sudden strike. Uh, it hits one. And then I use Relentless Assault. And only get one hit out of it. But then get lucky with two sixes on the leader reroll. Um, which is, we, we, we do expect about three hits this way. So, all right, they get two back at me. And um, I press. And only get one hit there they're down to one i press again and i managed to get my six so okay so helm's deep has been captured i don't know how easily i'm going to take out edoras given all these musters they have so um they let's see i'm attacking rivendell okay that makes sense and i don't get any hits with that they don't get any back i press wouldn't it be nice if i had another elite in there why do i not have that elite from mori in there i don't know uh i get two hits on that one they get two hits back to me this is my last round i'm guessing i'm playing the onslaught here so i play onslaught i get one hit and then i onslaught i think i just uh, they, 
Oh, do they still have two hit points left? No, they haven't taken their one hit yet. So that is that is enough. Um, okay, and my opponent draws a card. How do I get my last two victory points? Pilar gear is one attack. I don't know what else it is. I don't think I'm taking Lorian. So I guess these dudes from maybe the Witch King comes and fights. Can the Witch King come and take out Edoras? Given Dread and Despair? That seems really tough. Okay, Witch King. Oh, right. I can bring the dude from Osgiliath because there's no way these dudes from Pelargir can make it to Minas Tirith. I will save that for my last attack of the round. So even if they have scouts, um, they will not be able to uh, move in there. What about Path of the Woeses? Path of the Woeses doesn't... They got rid of it already. But I, Path of the Woeses wouldn't let them come to Minas Tirith anyway. So, all right. So I'm just going to have these seven hit points against these seven hit points and hope that it's enough. Okay. So um, I use the Mouth of Sauron. I take Fold. I move to Vale of Karnan to threaten maybe. I'm going to go after Dale. Uh, if I had another elite in there, even one elite, that would be a totally legitimate threat. Sad. Okay. Um, okay, so they properly, I think they properly uh, evaluate that Edoras is the right way to defend. They could have moved uh, an elite, you know, these units from Woodland Realm into there, but I think this is absolutely right. So we have a unit, uh, an arm. Oh, that's funny. Um, Mary's pat tagging along. Okay, M Mary's actually in Druid Enforced, but uh, we have this seven hit point army with six leadership against this seven hit point army uh, with one leadership in Edoras. Um, so this will be an exciting battle. And they have charge. And they have charge. Okay. So uh, I attack Edoras first because if I attacked <laughs> into Pilar gear first, they would play scouts. Oh, they don't have any dice left. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. Okay. Uh, I'm attacking into... Edris first. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, I start with, I have to start with Dread and Despair, right? Yeah. Um, Dread and Despair, they have charge. So let's see how their charge does. Charge gets one hit. Uh, I forfeit three. Obviously, I don't want them rolling any dice. Uh, and I get no hits on eight dice. Sad for me. And they get no hits. Okay, so pretty tame first round. I'm happy to get past the first round because now I'm hitting them on fives and sixes. And hopefully my superior leadership will uh, carry me through. And haha, I drew I draw Durin's Bane. Obviously not useful. Okay, so I go ahead and play Foul Stench here because, I don't know, why not mitigate it? They have no cards to play. And I get two sixes and a third third six three hits so i think that that might be kind of close to what we expect given hitting on fives and rolling 10 dice but um that's probably a little above average and um my opponent gets three hits definitely above average on only four dice because i had 10 dice basically well a little less than that because when combat rolls hit anyway uh so um they have four units and i have three units but I know that the Fellowship is going to destroy the ring next round. So, press? Oh my gosh, is the Witch King going to do this? Um, I, 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 I don't remember. Okay, I get one hit on my combat roll. I'm only rolling three dice. And one hit on my leader reroll. I just did two hits. They get one hit, one hit against me. 
Okay, so I did two to them. They did one to me. We're, we have, we're all out of combat cards. This is, oh my gosh. I have two units and they have two units, two leadership. They have two units, one leadership. And a tie goes to them if we both do two to each other because I need to have at least one unit left over to take the um, to take the settlement. Okay, I'm just continuing because I, I mean, I have to. Let's see what I roll. Nothing on my combat roll. One hit. One hit on my leader re-roll. Let's see what they get. Miss on their combat roll. Miss on their leader re-roll. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, so um, no hits to me. One hit to them. I cannot believe the Witch King is pulling this out. All right, now I think I'm heavily favored because I have four dice to their two. And now at this point, if they get one and I get one, I'm still I'm still okay. All right, so I get one hit. They don't get any hits against me. And um, I managed to take Edoras with that Witch King army. Oh my gosh. Minas Tirith is totally empty. I'm just like, I'll march into Edoras. Holy cow. All right, and then I use the ring to take out Pilar gear. Ha <laughs> ha, a whole bunch of sixes. Okay, so um, what a crazy game. That was that was worth showing. I did not remember what happened, and um, I'm excited to have shared this with you. Uh, let's look at statistics in the end. Um, I'm guessing my attacks uh, balanced out a bit. Wow, no, I was still minus eight on attacks. So these these three the these three here are my attacks. I was minus eight on attacks, but um, yeah. I got I got lucky with some um Yeah, I don't know. I I think I think if my opponent had rushed the fellowship a little bit more um I wouldn't have been able to do it and then at the very end managed to take out Gandalf and then they only rolled one one movement so they couldn't destroy the ring on turn 9. What a game. Great game. If you have not signed up for the tournament and you're still watching this video, uh, you should really seriously consider signing up because you are a War of the Ring fan and you might have fun playing. All right. Hope, hope you have a good rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed this video.